Thank you for coming on. Uh, really happy to have you on. Um, congrats on uh, Threshold. Uh, Thank you. It's great. I loved it. And uh, I know last night it, you told me it won Best Film at the Smartphone Film Fest. Is that right? The F3? SF3. Yeah, yeah. F3. it's an Australian-based mobile uh, mobile phone film festival. That's crazy. That in so every 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 short film and feature there was shot uh, on a knife or on a mobile phone. That's pretty crazy that they're watching your film in Australia. <laughs> that's pretty wild. It's actually the, the awesome. only place so far that's uh, shown it on the big screen. Wow! Wow! That's cool. That's cool. We so, might not get to see in the U.S. anytime soon, so we got our we got our theater experience in. Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, how did that feel, winning that award, you know, all that hard work that went into it, being shot on two iPhones, a 20-page outline, no script? What was that like to, to win that? Uh, I mean, we we had another film a while ago, Bastard, that came out that we never really did the festival thing with. And so we hadn't really gotten the experience of submitting and getting to become a part of all these communities every time. So it was kind of fun to, you know, not yeah. only do that, but also get to win one. So yeah. Yeah. completely gratifying yeah, yeah I'm, I'm sure i'm sure um it was definitely a uh, worthy because it, it, it was cra it was crazy because in the press release that i got sent by patrick it said that it was filmed within 12 days is that right yeah that's yeah crazy. so did you take breaks to like edit the film on the road trip or or did you do it all after no we just dumped the footage every day and um Kind of hope for the best. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, the post-production was a two-year... Like, we shot it October 2018. Actually, the, today might be the two-year anniversary. I'd have to check. But around yeah. around now, two years ago. Uh, so post-production lasted a good bit. Wow, wow. So... No, no money. Uh, relying on favors, things move a little more slowly. And, and you had a 20-page outline? That's true? Yeah, I was. A 20-page outline... Um, with some dial very little dialogue mm -hmm. uh, that only covered the first two acts. Oh, wow. Yeah, so the, the, all of the third act said is, uh, day nine, they arrive, and that's it. <laughs> and we kind of just yeah, based... That was the last 10 minutes of the movie. <laughs> it was based on the words, they arrive. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. that's wild. Um, I'm sure it was tough filming on two iPhones. Um, I mean, how did you even pull that off? Like a road trip? Did you take one car? That's all. That's what I was asking myself. Oh, yeah. two. Okay. Two cars. We had a production car and the actual movie car, which happened to be Patrick's car. Oh, okay. Which I, which I still drive around with all the stickers on it. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Was that just for the movie? Is that how your actual car? Completely. Was? For day two, we spent like an hour at a at the car wash, just sticking all the stickers on. <laughs> Is and they have not come off since. Oh, my God. <laughs> they don't look as good now, though. They're all kind of curled and peely, and there's yeah. no color on them. Where did you drive to for the 12 days? Where did that whole trip lead you? <laughs> we started here, actually. That, the, so the only part of the movie that wasn't shot in chronological order was kind of the, it's the first, like, four-ish scenes. Mm -hmm. Because we had to do all the interior apartment stuff here. And then in, like, the garage we were looking for. And then we shot the outside of the building. At, we just found some place in Utah. We just kind of, a lot of the movie was us just driving in hopes of finding good places and then stopping and shooting it when we found them. And then, <laughs> and then moving on before someone was like, get off my lawn, you know? So like, we, Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's awesome. That's so <laughs> punk rock. Any, anytime we were uh, shooting outside, uh, like uh, that colorful hallway restaurant looking place or the mall looking bridge. Mm -hmm. It was just us walking somewhere and shooting and hoping tell no one tells us not to. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. That's that's like so like early two thousands jackass right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, your two stars, Joey Millen and Madison West, were absolutely incredible in that, and they'll actually be on the show next week with me. So, how did that's you? Awesome. How did you? Uh, how was it working with them? And how, how did you meet Madison and Joey? Well, we all went to school together. Uh, I went to USC um, mm -hmm. and uh, we knew we needed two people who uh, were s sort of comfortable with each other. I mean, this process with 12 days uh, and very little money, there were a lot of situations where we were all sleeping in the same room. Even some of like Joey was often on the floor. 
Uh, um, and we really wanted that uh, brother sister bond and Maddie and Joey uh, both knew each other and had worked with each other in the past. And uh, through a, a couple of series of auditions, it just worked out really well between them two. Um, so how did you get into filmmaking? Pal, well, do you want to go first? Yeah, I'll, I'll start. Um, I had a weird entry where like I'd been into like computers and film it's kind of like I actually went I wanted to go to USC for video game design for a long period um but I was in a couple bands and the bands came with me to USC and I had gotten in for film but I really I was 80 percent certain I was just gonna drop out and go on tour with these bands and like right when the film classes started and I was theoretically leaving the uh, everyone kind of had a falling out you know, on the on the songwriting side, so the band kind of dissolved, and I was like, okay, I guess uh, I'll just take these film classes then. <laughs> and like, uh, yeah, so soft, sophomore year of college, I started shooting commercially, and um, it just kind of carried through. Wow, that's pretty insane. <laughs> How about you, Patrick? How did you get involved in filmmaking? Uh, well, I initially, for the longest time leading up to college, I wanted to write novels. Uh, I was just completely, I, my entire plan was I'm going to be a teacher and I'm going to write books. And like, that was it. Um, and then through my process of writing, I realized like how I realized I was happy with my writing is if I could picture it as a movie. Mm. And then I, I fell into a new group of friends who were often shooting things on you know, shooting short little sketches and stuff. And so I started writing stuff for us and I found I enjoyed that a lot more. I loved, I love seeing the words come to life. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's yeah. pretty cool. I, I, I wanted to be an art teacher actually when I was in high school, I, I went into college as an art major and mm -hmm. did like an art class for one semester. I'm like, this sucks. So, <laughs> it was horrible it was it was a five-hour class from like nine in the morning to like two in the afternoon on a friday and it was terrible but i i got involved in filmmaking i made like three short films in college and then i kind of veered over to journalism so i can kind of relate to that aspect of just changing goals and dreams and and what you want to do with your life um so who are your favorite filmmakers? Uh, active or all time? <laughs> either. Either. Um, I mean, my, my go-tos uh, aren't all horror. Uh, I love all genres. Like, uh, probably two of my favorite filmmakers are like Kis uh, Christoph Kislowski and Richard Linklater. Um, and then on the horror side, I mean, like I'll just throw on John Carpenter anytime, any day. Like, how can you not, you know? Yeah, really. I mean, Halloween yeah. is a classic. Yeah. <laughs> Powell, how about you? Uh, Steve McQueen for me, I think. Uh, just, I love, I've always, I've always loved Shame. That movie, like, hit me uh, mm -hmm. real hard <laughs> the first time I saw it. And um, I think Patrick heard me reference that movie more than anything else. He probably wants to. I was just going to say, every single time we have a project, we're like, can we do the Shame shot? Yeah, he wants to punch me right. Shame, shame, shame and hunger, pal. Yeah, we'll I, love, I love those movies, and uh, that's never like an uplifting thing necessarily to say because they're very heavy. But um, I just think they're perfectly directed. Um, and then, yeah, um, I, I like I like all the David Fincher movies. Too. I like that Seven sort of straddles thriller and horror, and there's always this online fun Google debate of like, is Seven a horror movie though, or is it just a thriller? I don't know. I enjoy, I enjoy that, but um. Straight horror, that's a good question, yeah. I mean, we, we really like just blending genre a lot. Which was, to some effect, n not as successful on our first movie in some ways, because people ha were a little more confused as to what to call it the first time around. And we insisted it was a retro slasher, but it was also largely just a drama again. And that's what yeah. Threshold I think I think our first movie was, was uh, it, it was definitely like a straight horror movie with, like really heavy drama put in between. And this one is a really heavy drama with some horror put in between. <laughs> <laughs> and there's definitely, we've definitely seen some whiplash of people who have seen both uh, expecting something different, but. I will say this blend seemed to work out better for us than the other way around. Mm. Uh, people were far more confused regarding Bastard because the tone <laughs> seemed to shift too much for, for, their, for their liking. And this one's a little more consistent. Uh, now the tough question. What are your favorite horror movies? 
I knew that question was going to come up. I've been thinking about it for like a fucking week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my, my favorite is American Psycho. I think it's, it's, I mean, beyond being having some of the most tense shots I've ever seen, it's also like one of the funniest movies I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> and something I can just throw on any time. Um, American Psycho or any, any of the alien movies. I, I grew up on, on horror. Um, my mom, uh, her favorite movie is Jaws. So she was showing me that very early. The Jaws like, from like second to fourth grade. Mm -hmm. I was fed the sequels to and the originals of like Jaws, Poltergeist, Amityville Horror, like all Omen, like all of those. Those are the movies that made me love yeah. horror and franchises. All the things kids shouldn't watch. The one, the one I do circle back to the most is still the original Texas Chainsaw. I just yeah. have like the blend of realism and also some outlandishness, but like, I don't know. Uh, that one always sticks with me. And then I, okay. Say what you will. I love the remake of Evil Dead. I I think it's super fun. It's it's, uh, maybe not the the coolest answer, but like there is some ridiculous shit in that movie that I still thoroughly enjoy. I'm not gonna say it's my favorite by any means, but it's it's definitely been one of my favorite movies we've watched multiple times with people. Yeah, like that movie gets reactions out of people. It's so fun. Whether or not it's a good movie, up for debate, but it's really fun to watch. No, it's good. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you like Rob Zombie's remake of Halloween? I plead the fifth. I say nothing. I say nothing. <laughs> I like half of it. That's a good answer. I like I like I like the half when Rob Zombie wasn't remaking Halloween. <laughs> when Rob Zombie was doing his own thing, I I enjoyed that. Which is I I and I don't think this is an unpopular opinion. Is I, I enjoy his second movie a little more. I wouldn't say I enjoy it but I enjoy it more than the first one just because it's 100% just Rob Zombie doing his own thing. Yeah, yeah, with the white horse. and the, Yeah, that mm -hmm. was a weird one. But um, I loved Rob Zombie's Halloween, actually. I thought it was great. I thought it really gave a good backstory to Michael and why he was so fucked up. But if I had to choose my favorite remake, it'd probably be the Wolfman remake from 2010. Oh, shit. With Anthony Hopkins. I mean, the effects were awesome. Yeah, yeah. perfect movie. So Patrick and I had a nice discussion over Instagram about Godzilla. Are you a Godzilla fan, pal? I can't claim to be well read or well watched on Godzilla, unfortunately. Okay, <laughs> okay so this is our territory. So you were telling me, Patrick, uh, some of your favorite Godzilla movies. Uh, what mm -hmm. are they? Tell everyone listening what what they are. Uh, I mean, my the three to me the three perfect ones are all like the new fresh starts like the original godzilla uh shin godzilla which is just the most terrifying of any of them uh and i do love the 2014 godzilla uh and then going off of those um like my favorite to watch would be like biolanti adora and then anything with mothra yeah mothra's cool i just i hop around singing the mothra song <laughs> i love it <laughs> um I loved Shin Godzilla. I saw that when it came out. And that I, I think that Godzilla design was one of the coolest ever. Oh yeah. All through all all of the designs. Have you uh you seen the full size Shin Godzilla that they built in Japan? As yeah. Like part of a theme park where the you zip can line. like zip line into it. Yeah. Mouth? That's yeah. awesome. Japan rules. Why don't we have that here? <laughs> it's true. I mean we need some Godzilla stuff here. Uh, did you like King of the Monsters from last year? I did. Because I hear. I, I mean, it's a it's a Godzilla movie. Like <laughs> if everyone's complaining about like the humans and stuff. I was like, I don't give a shit. Like, yeah, it's like it's gorgeous and the monsters are awesome and they fight. Like <laughs> the, only time, the only time I've seen that movie was on like a bar TV. I was ten, no, and I watched that in a bar. It was a huge TV, but like yeah, it was. I I, I sat through the entire movie. I like I, I've never done that in a bar before. <laughs> <laughs> and I drank to that movie for a long time. Um, so my final question, um, since we're in the spooky season and Halloween's coming very shortly, what are some of your favorite Halloween memories and what's your favorite candy? 
I okay. So for a long time, when uh, you know the pandemic was an issue, we would come over. Actually, um, since like since USC, we were all friends there. We come over to my parents' house because they had a huge garage, and we would project horror movies on my parents' wall. So like people we make movies with, like all of our friends, we would like. I think one of the best ones we did Halloween and the guests back to back, and that's one of the ones I remember the most vividly. And like, mm -hmm. so that definitely stands out a lot. Oh, that's pretty rad. Yeah, it's pretty rad. What about yeah. you, Patrick? Yeah, same. I think. Uh, I mean, just just sharing movies with friends has been a lot of our our recent Halloweens. Mm -hmm. Like last year, we did we planned out an entire Halloween, and we'll be doing it again this year virtually. Uh, a whole hair Halloween marathon. Uh, like we brought a, a screen uh, into like one of our friends' larger living room and planned out movies and then music videos and trailers all in between. Um, and then the year before that, I, I really enjoyed, we had the really weird double feature with our friends. It was Constantine and then Cabin Fever 2. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was so weird. random. <laughs> Constantine. You mean the yeah. one with Keanu Reeves? Yeah. yeah. Wow, yeah. okay. That wasn't a bad movie, actually. No, it's great. What's the best thing you've ever dressed up as for Halloween? Your best costume. Oh, I got one. It's not exciting to almost anyone else. I dressed up as one of my best friends. And like, <laughs> that, the thing is, it, that doesn't sound exciting, but when you see <laughs> this guy, you know how excited, here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find this so I can, I can show you. But Patrick, you answer the question until I find this. Uh, God, I don't know. Okay, wait, where the hell is this? I know, I, I dyed my hair like silver once and I went as a, a Crazy X number three from Scott Pilgrim. That was a good time. <laughs> I've done a, what, some, of my, some of my favorite dress up moments uh, haven't been at Halloween, but I've been at Comic-Con. Mm -hmm. uh, the first three years I went to Comic-Con, I only wore, I wore uh, kids superhero costumes. <laughs> but like to wear them i'd have to cut them up so it'd be like an iron man suit that like went down to here and like down to my knees <laughs> just jammed in there and it'd be really fun uh because you know plastic and cheap and torn up and everything and then uh it'd be fun to go up and take pictures next to people in like really nice expensive iron man and, like, <laughs> just compare it that's awesome that's kind of funny <laughs> that's yeah. pretty funny I'm, tr I'm trying my best here wait this is i'm getting there I dressed up one year. I think I was in like seventh grade as Billy Joe from Green Day. That's pretty good. This is going to be similar. So here's my one of my best friends. His name is Zane. Yeah. And very iconic. Uh, very iconic look. He wore this every day for almost a year and a half in college. Like same thing. So this year, I I went and I did that. <laughs> uh, awesome. Yeah. And I'm awesome. I'm never going to top that. So. <laughs> Um, so I guess the, that that's that's all I got for you guys. You have any? Uh, oh, it was gummies. Gummies. I'm, I'm like uh, gum, gummies. Yeah, oh. anything gummy or cinnamony or they're my favorite candies. Powell, I'll favorite. eat them till I until I get a stomachache. Favorite candies? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> I love uh, I love anything that just tastes completely synthetic. I love Three Musketeers bars. I love. <laughs> Uh, any form of Milky Way. Mm. Uh, I went through a large, I only was eating Charleston shoe for a minute. I don't know why, but that was just like top of the list for a long time. I went through a massive Twizzler phase. Mm. You know, yeah, I got on the bandwagon of like Twizzler versus Red Vines. Oh, <laughs> uh, wait, I, I forgot. I, I realized I should have, I should have, I should have saved something. The other good Halloween one, when it first came out, my friend got a yellow jacket and I got a red onesie and we did, we went as, I was the balloon from it and he went as, uh, <laughs> as George. That's e. awesome. Yeah, okay, that's, that, that's the other answer. All right. That's great. Uh, have you ever, uh, <laughs> balloon? <laughs> yeah, so I, who just, it was kind of weird because like he had like a red string to like be the balloon string and like. We were going around to a lot of parties, so he was kind of walking me around on the string all night. So it looked a little bit kinky, but like, I don't know. I thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I was going to ask you about Charleston shoes, but now I'm thinking about the balloon. <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever put a Charleston shoe in the freezer? Oh, yeah. Okay, good.
Yeah, you're not a fan of Charleston gin until you've done the like the freezer things. So. Yeah, the <laughs> same thing can be applied with the Snickers bar. Mm, yeah. Or a three, a three Musketeer in the freezer is good too. Uh, Girl Scout cookies, the Thin Mints, and you fr- if you put those in the fridge, oh my god. Or a frozen Reese's cup. Mm. Just mm. frozen chocolate. Yeah, frozen chocolate. Just frozen chocolate. Frozen chocolate. Frozen chocolate. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Listing every possible fucking option. That's. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, before I let you go, do you guys have a? Uh, any closing remarks about the film? I hope people like it. I mean, it's, it's weird. Uh, I mean, don't, you know, uh, I, I think horror is really in this, um, you know, before it was like mumble gorely was very popular. And now we're very much in a, uh, a 24 era of horror. Um, and, and I think this, this fits, fits nicely in there. It's, it's, it's very, uh, ambitious considering what we had um, it's certainly the most emotional thing we've made uh, it blends a lot of genres uh, we took a lot of cues from uh, what Benson and Moorhead have done with like re- uh, resolution and spring uh, and just we're just trying to make something wholly our own and I just hope people can connect with the characters on some kind of level because it's very personal for us yeah, we've we've said from the beginning too that like the our ideal scenario was that even if it was just like the lim- most limited amount of people who did this, was like they saw it and they realized that they could also, you know, they could they've been maybe sitting on an idea for a long time that they've never done. Like, fuck, I'm stuck with like very limited resources, whether it's mm-hmm. money, pandemic wise, anything. And like, I can take a phone, and I can still make this movie that I've been wanting to do. And so we hope, you know, someone gets that same crazy spark that we did and like goes out and does the same thing. So. Because our, our goal for the movie was to make a movie that, you know, if you took out all the horror stuff, the the relationship stuff, like that would be enough for a movie. And to us, I, I think that worked. But did the horror stuff work for you? Yeah. You know, there are scenes where they're in that Airbnb when they're carving mm-hmm. the pumpkins and that dude just popped out. I wasn't expecting that. So, like, I almost fell out of my chair. And then there's awesome. a time <laughs> where, where, where she would, like, start convulsing and her nose would bleed and and it, it was just it was you could definitely tell there was a lot of horror in that movie it was definitely influenced by by a lot of the supernatural kind of genre the witch even especially mm-hmm. towards the end um but i i loved it how you improvised though i it, it was just incredible it was just Thanks. incredible and thank you appreciate that a lot thank yeah no, no problem man um so tell people where they can uh, find you and follow you and twitters and instagrams and things like that <laughs> yeah so the movie has its own instagram uh still growing <laughs> but it has something uh it's threshold underscore film um and then i'm powell underscore robinson <laughs> on instagram. Uh, yeah, i'm mostly on twitter at just young enough or you can just search up patrick r young uh but on october 24th and 25th we'll be at press play film festival which is a dallas festival uh, that will also have the film online. So if they want to check out the film next week, uh, it'll be there. And then hopefully, you know, we'll have distribution soon and yeah. y'all can watch it. Yeah. I also love the poster. The poster's sick. Oh, the poster's thanks, amazing. Man. The inverted cross and the two faces. Yeah, I love that shit. It was very, <laughs> black, very black metal. Um, so, There's a lot of punk themes throughout the whole movie. I think so. <laughs> it, had to, it had to show in the poster. So. Well... I know that now that you said that you were in a band, it kind of makes sense now that that Leo was in a band that didn't really work out. <laughs> we all had very personal connections to a lot mm-hmm. of the things happening in this movie, and I think um, there's yeah. a lot of all five of us right in that film. So. Giving up on music was definitely a uh, in favor of a different passion. But, well, luckily I didn't, you know, had as downtrodden as he is by his other <laughs> option, and I really been doing <laughs> yeah into film, but um, yeah. Yeah, but <laughs> but yeah, we all, that that was definitely shared. And like I, you know, I played on the the opening track that he screams to is like me and a friend um, who's also a really good composer. Uh, we did the punk song, and it's me screaming along. And oh, nice. a lot of the, a lot a lot of the music carries through to this one. So yeah. <laughs> a lot of like uh, Green Day and Sex Pistols influence in there. <laughs> I dig it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, thank you guys for joining me. It's a uh, pleasure to talk to you after weeks of talking on social media <laughs> yeah. to finally see you guys um 
And until then, stay creepy, creeps.